touching every heart. Touching every heart. We worship you. We worship you. We bless your name. We worship you. You are here. You are here. Working in our midst. Working in our midst. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. You are here. You Amen. 
of victory. Every need, every 
Come on and give the Lord a round of applause this morning. Hallelujah. We worship him. Because he is our king of kings. And he is our lord of lords. Hallelujah. It is in him we live and move. And have our being this morning. Hallelujah. We worship him. We worship him. Because he's worthy. To be praised. We don't have enough. Time. Just to give him thanks. It would take us all morning. Hallelujah. David said, what can I render unto him for all his benefits this morning? Oh, there is just so much to give God thanks for. There is just so much to exalt his name for. Because he is worthy this morning. But when we say, when we say hallelujah, we're giving him the highest praise because he is worthy to be praised. He is the most high God and there is none like him. You know, he's here because I can feel him. I can feel his presence. And in his presence, there is fullness of joy. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Where the Holy Spirit is, there is freedom. Hallelujah. Hearts bow before him. Oh, because he alone is worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. In his presence, glory to God. There is fullness of joy. When we come in his presence, we forget about ourselves. We forget about ourselves. And we concentrate on him. And we worship him. Because everything is about him. It is in him we live and move. It is in him we have our being. Somebody say forget about yourselves. Concentrate on him. And worship him. Oh because he is worthy. To be praised. Hallelujah. From the uprising of the sun. To the going down of the same, his name is worthy. Somebody will criticize you and say, why you have to be so noisy? You don't know what the Lord has done for me. You don't need to look at the person beside you to praise God. You can praise him for yourself. Because God has been good to us. Oh, he woke me up this morning. Hallelujah. I'm in the house of God. I have reason to praise him. I can use my hands. I can walk on my feet. Hallelujah. I have enough reason to praise him. Glory to God. The psalmist let everything that had breath. Praise the Lord because he alone is worthy to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a merciful God. What an awesome God. What a mighty God. And he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We could, we could stay here all morning. And just shout Hosanna to the highest. We could stay here all morning. And shout hallelujah to his name. And it still wouldn't be enough. 
Oh, because he is so worthy this morning. Oh, but we thank him. We thank him for the good times. We thank him for the bad times. We thank him for everything. Because it's the will of God. It's the will of God that we give thanks in all things. In all things, we give thanks. Praise God, praise God, praise God. I want you, while you're standing, just to open your Bibles with me this morning. Hallelujah. Because this morning, you know, as we get into the Word, it's, it's about giving God praise. 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 Somebody said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul, my soul, my soul, my soul cry out, hallelujah. Thank God. Thank God for saving me. If it hadn't been for God, who was on my side, I wouldn't be here this morning. If it hadn't been for God, who was on my side, I wouldn't be here this morning. Oh, but the psalmist said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Praise God. Romans, Romans chapter 8 this morning. Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8. And I want you to know this morning that we're here to celebrate. We're celebrating Jesus. We're celebrating what he did for us at the cross. We're celebrating the blood. We're celebrating his life. We're celebrating his death. And we're celebrating his resurrection. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm just going to read you a four, four verses from Romans chapter 8. It says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, oh, but after the spirit. For the law of the spirit, oh hallelujah, of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God, come on somebody, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin, condemn sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Hallelujah. You may be seated. May the Lord add a rich blessing to the reading of his holy word. Hallelujah. You know, I could... I could stay here and we could praise him all day because he's so good to us. When I look over my life, when I look from where he has brought me, when I look at the many times that I could have died, should have died, it would have been okay if I died. But God, but God, oh, this week I was reflecting on the word of the word that he spoke to us last Sunday. We were dead in trespasses and sin. But God, who is rich in mercy and great love. And this morning, all we can say is, but God, but God, because God loves us. Amen. With a special love. A love beyond our understanding. A love that picks us up. When we were way down. Lifted us up. 
planted our feet on solid ground. Paul says, great love. Mm. And so this morning, as we come in, I want to honor our most high God. Hallelujah. Because to him belong the glory, the honor, and the praise. Hallelujah. We honor our pastors this morning. Come on, pastors. Stand to your feet. Glory to God. This month is clergy month. Amen. Hallelujah. With this, come on, Sister Lydia, uh, Sister Sharon, you may stand too. Hallelujah. And we just thank God for his work he's doing in the church. Amen. Because the Lord said, the Lord has put before us leaders, pastors, shepherds, after his own heart. He, he, he did not choose them by vote, by popularity, but he chose them according to his own will. Because what we're, what we're dealing with today is God's will. And so we honor you this morning. Why are you sit down so quick? It's okay. We honor you this morning and we thank God for you. And we know that we can never repay you for the labor of love. But we want you to know that we may not always say it, but we love you. And our prayers are with you. Because I believe that God invested in the church. Amen? Do you believe that? Christ's investment in us. What a glory. Uh, and we didn't deserve it. But because of his love. Because of his grace. Because of his mercy. And I thank him this morning. I thank God for everyone in their respective places. This morning who you're worshiping with us. Whether you're a visitor or you're a part of us as members. Or you just worship with us from time to time. We, we are happy you are here today. And you're not here by accident. But this is by divine order. Because this day was already written in God's book long before it came to pass. The same way he knew you from before you were formed in your mother's womb. Amen? That's the God that I serve. He knew us before we were born. Amen? He knew what, the name, what name we would have. You think so? Oh, bless his holy name. And that God deserves our worship. I'm so glad that we don't have to perform some kind of science to invoke his presence. Because he's here with us. David said, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Because thou art with me. God is with us. The songwriter says, on the way from earth to heaven, he will guide us. With his eyes. He, says, he said, look at the lily. He said, look at the sparrow. Two are sold for a farthing. Not one fall from the sky. Without God's knowledge. How much us? More, how much more us? Who are made in the image of God. Some of us, we worry. We worry going to bed. We worry waking up. We worry in the middle day. Sometimes we catch ourselves, we're still worrying about so many different things. Can I retire at 65? Am I going to have enough money to retire? Am I going to die from cancer? Am I going to have dementia? Are my children going to be okay if I leave this earth? Oh, God. Am I going to have a job tomorrow? I want that promotion. It's been promised and it hasn't come yet. And we worry about so much. Amen. Lord, does my spouse still love me? Like they say they do. Most of the things we worry about, we can't fix it. 
And Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all the things that you worry about, they will be added unto you. He says, can you by worrying change anything? As a matter of fact, you only give yourself more gray here. And then you give yourself high blood pressure. Amen. And then, you know, uncontrolled high blood pressure leads to stroke and heart attack. So why worry when there are so many negative things? Thank you, Pastor, bro. Why worry when you can pray? Amen. But thank God for the word this morning. The Apostle Paul is writing to us, writing to the church in Rome. And somebody says, if the book of Roman was a diamond, then Romans 8 is the dazzle in the diamond. Because Romans 8 gives the believers so much hope. Hope in Jesus Christ. Hope, hallelujah, that there is life in Christ Jesus. You see, all over scripture, the Bible tells us about judgments, condemnation. Some judgments are temporary. Some lead into eternity. And there, when you read you know, in Romans 3, it says, For all have sinned and come short of God's glory. The Bible tells us the soul that sinned shall surely die. Are you with me? Yeah. Hallelujah. John 3, 16, For God so loved the world. He gave his only begotten son. Amen. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish. But have. But have. Everlasting life. And then the other verse said, Lord, but there's condemnation. For men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. So there is so much judgment. It says it's appointed unto man once to die. And after death, there is judgment. So there is, death is an appointment, but then tomorrow is not promised. So it's easier to die than to live. But Romans 8 opens up with such an encouraging word. It says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So the apostle Paul says yes there may be condemnation for the world. But those who are in Christ Jesus that condemnation has been lifted. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah. Oh glory to God. We were headed for destruction. But there came Jesus. Lift the condemnation. So we can have eternal life. Now hallelujah. We can have real life. Amen. And, and I want you to understand that. You know, when you are in Christ, you will suffer some things. This flesh will suffer. You will get some hurt. But the Bible says that he is such a high priest that he is touched with the feelings of our infirmities. The Bible says in every, he was tempted in every point, but yet without sin. That means any temptation that you can experience. Jesus knows it. This is why we can say there's not a friend. Like the lowly Jesus. No not one. No not one. Romans 8 goes on to tell us. Hallelujah. In, verse 8, in Romans 8 28. He says and we know. That all things. Work together for good. To them that love the Lord and to those who are they called according to his purpose. Are you with me church? So when you are in Christ Jesus, you are elevated. In the same Romans 8, the apostle Paul continues to encourage the believers. He says in 34, who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died. Yea, that is risen again. 
who is even at the right hand of God, also making intercession for us. So when you are in Christ Jesus, not only has condemnation been lifted, but no one can condemn you. Who shall condemn you? And then he goes on to say, who shall separate you? Who shall separate you from the love of Jesus Christ? Shall tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, or sword. So when you are in Christ Jesus, you are covered by his blood. And this morning, I want to tell you that Jesus has invested much in us. And I want to share three thoughts with you this morning. Because the, the, not only did Jesus invest in us, but we find that the Holy Spirit is right there. Alongside fulfilling God's purpose of redemption, regeneration, sanctification. Bringing us back into fellowship with God. The Bible said, and I want to I share with you. He says, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. Who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And the spirit here is the Holy Spirit. Yes? And so when we talk about the spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the one, glory to God, that frees us from the law of sin and death. The Holy Spirit frees us from the law of sin and death. That's point number one. Point number two, the Holy Spirit, he, he fulfills the law of righteousness into us. And we're going to get into that some more. And then the next thing that we look at, the, th the third thing is, the Holy Spirit is the one that changes our nature. Amen. Changes our nature. Because we were born with a sinful nature. I told you last time that we are not sinners just because we commit sin. We are sinners because by nature, we were the children of wrath. We were born in sin. Yes, and you can dress it up, but it's still sin. But, but, and so the Bible says, and I want us to look into the text because the time is running, and we have the Lord's Supper, and so we are celebrating the Lord's Supper when we think about what Jesus did for us. And so we look at Romans chapter 8 here, and the Bible says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus had made me free from the law of sin and death. A, a law is a compelling force. A law will force you against your will. So there was a law called the law of sin and death. What that law states, the soul that sinneth shall surely die. And we were all guilty. But thanks be to God. The Holy Spirit now, the Holy Spirit through the work of Christ on the cross, what the Holy Spirit does, he applies the gospel to our hearts. Are you with me? You can't get saved on your own. You can't, listen, a dead man cannot get up and walk. He has to be raised up from death. And so the Holy Spirit takes the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and applies it to your heart. When he applies it to your heart, then your heart becomes softened, and then you begin to receive the gospel of salvation. So what we, he does, he now frees us from the law of sin and death, and so we now have the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. We now have life in the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is very integral in the life of every individual. It takes the Holy Spirit to bring you conscious of God's will. The preacher could preach a thousand sermons. If the Holy Spirit don't take that word and pierce your heart 
you will not accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. This is why when you get convicted, you don't want to run around and play around, but you want to turn it over to Jesus right then and there, because after a while, your heart gets hard. And if you remember good old Pharaoh, Pharaoh hardened his heart. Oh, glory to God. And then in turn, God hardened it. Because, Lord, that's another sermon for another time. So what the Holy Spirit does, and I want you to know that there is a ministry of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit is not God's, what's one of the words, Lord of his mercy. They call God's fanatic power. We're talking about God in the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is the one who, so now he, he takes away the law of sin and death and he applies the, 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 the spirit of life in Christ Jesus to us. So now we can cry, Abba Father. It's the Holy Spirit that adopts us into the family of God. This is why the Paul, um, Jesus told Nicodemus, you have to be born of the Spirit. You have to be born of the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is at work in our lives. And so the Bible says the law was weak through the flesh. What does that mean? Something was wrong with the law? Never. The law is perfect. The law is righteous. The law is God's prescription on how to get to God. There is nothing wrong with the law. The problem is the flesh of man is weak. Man was born in sin. And so no man can fulfill the requirements of the law. Really, pastor? You mean Moses didn't do it? Moses could not do it. Abraham could not do it. Brother David couldn't do it. Isaiah couldn't do it. Jeremiah couldn't do it. No man could fulfill the requirements of the law. But the law is perfect. In, in Galatians 3 and verse 10, it's coming on the screen. For as many as are of the works of the law, they are under a curse. Because, for it is written, Curse is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. What he's saying is that man cannot fulfill the requirements of the law. If you break one, you're guilty of all. Well, I worship on the Sabbath. Oh, Lord. That's wonderful. Do you lie? Do you steal? Mm. Do you commit adultery? No, no, no. But Jesus said, but listen, you don't have to get into the act to be guilty. But if you as much as peep, oh, and you begin to conjure up in your mind, you're already guilty. And so when the, the Bible says he came to fulfill the law, he came not only to live the law, but he came to explain what the, the, what the law required. And, 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 and no man was able to fulfill the law. But thank God for Jesus. Come on, somebody. Thank God for Jesus. He fulfilled the law. What the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son. His own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. It doesn't mean that Christ was sinful. But the flesh is sinful. So Christ came in the form of human flesh. Oh, to condemn sin in the flesh. Because it is flesh that sinned. Flesh has to die. Thank God for Jesus Christ. Amen. And some folks say, well, I can't worship a white Jesus. Because Jesus was black. 
That's, that's another bit of fake news. And uh, conspiracy theory. And another trick of the devil. How did race come in the picture? The Bible tells us, we read it this morning, that Jesus was made of the seed of Abraham. So we know where he came from. Man didn't say he was white or man didn't determine if he was black. He came through the seed of Abraham. But let me tell you something else about this Jesus. He came through Rahab, who was a harlot. He came through Ruth, who was a Moabite. He came through Jews. He came through Gentiles. He came for one and all, so that irrespective of who you are, his blood will cover you. He is not racial. He is not governed by the cultures of men, but he came to die for sinners. So for all intents and purposes, he could have been yellow. That does not matter. He came so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. So when they come to you and tell you about black or white Jesus, that is from the devil. He came through the seed of Abraham. He came through the seed of David because this is what God promised. God lives to bring his word to pass. So he came in the likeness of sinful flesh so he could condemn sin in the flesh. So all those who put their trust in him can rejoice in Jesus Christ. The beautiful illustration about a story I read about this guard. This guard was, he was guarding a bridge that spanned this huge river. And of course, that job is not a hard job, but it's precise. It's on time. At four o'clock, the bridge had to be raised so a ferry boat could go down the river at 4 o'clock. At 4.15, the bridge had to be lowered so that the train, a passenger train that's carrying passengers could run on the tracks on the bridge. Oh, hallelujah. One day, this father decided to take his son to work with him. Because he wanted to spend some time with his son. And so the son was there with him, spending time. At four o'clock, he raised the bridge so the ferry could go by. The little boy, unknowingly to the dad, went out onto the bridge. Because he wanted to see the boat that was passing. The account said that, in straining to see, the little boy fell in the gears of the bridge. Couldn't help himself. He tried. He couldn't get out. The father saw him, but now he was faced with a dilemma. The little boy is down there in the gears. He can go get him, but it's going to take some time. The train. And while he was there thinking, he heard the tooting of the train. He was shot back into reality. Because now, his son is stuck in the gear. He loves his son. He knows his son. Those people on the train are strangers. He's never met them. But if he go to get his son... Those strangers would die. Without hesitation. Minutes before 4.15, he lowered the bridge, crushing his son to death, but sparing the lives of those on the train. When we think about Jesus, when we think about the Father, and what he did for us, that's like his son caught in the gears. But you and I, we were strangers to God. We were his creation. Oh, glory to God. But we didn't know him. We were enemies of God. But he chose to send his son to die 
so that we on the train could have life and have it more abundantly. And when I read that story, it brought chills down my spine. But that's what God did so that you and I can have life this morning. And so when we think about what Jesus did, and when we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we think about the love that was extended to us. He didn't have to do it, but because of love. Oh, the love that bought us. Oh, the grace that sought us. Oh, the love that brought us to the fold. Wondrous grace that brought us to the fold. So we look at, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit canceling the law of sin and death and bringing us into the family of God. The law, hallelujah, is now fulfilled in us. Why? And that leads us to our next point. Verse 4, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, you're saying putting your faith in Jesus is enough. But that's not enough. Because when we put our faith in Christ, we are still struggling with sin. John says, if any of you say you have no sin, the truth is not in us, you're a liar. Because even with God's forgiveness, we still come short. Maybe I should say we, Mary, should say I. You can only speak for yourself. Amen. But you see, it is not only Christ's death on the cross that's important. You see, the life that Jesus lived is equally important. Because Christ fulfilled the law. He was a perfect man. I heard a TV announcer say, well, look at Jesus Christ. He wasn't perfect. I said, boy, I wish I could get you to talk to You need to take that back right now. That's blasphemy. He had to be perfect. He had to be holy. Because the Bible says holiness without, no man shall see God. That means in order for us to exist in God's presence, we have to be holy. In order for us to have fellowship with God, we have to be holy. So one of the work of the Holy Spirit is to try, oh glory to God, the righteousness that Christ lived. The holy life that he lived was imputed to us so that when we stand before God, he doesn't see us clothed with our little righteousness because Isaiah says it's filthy rags in the sight of God, but he sees us covered with the holiness of Jesus Christ. And that is accomplished by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, hallelujah. Now you remember on the cross, when Christ was on the cross, oh hallelujah, the Bible said that he took our sins. He took our sins. He took, our, he took my past sin. He took my present sin. He took my future sin. And he laid it on Jesus. So my sin was imputed to Christ. And in exchange for his righteousness. So now I stand in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. This is why there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Are you with me? When you are in Christ Jesus, not only does he take your sins away, but he imparts to you the righteousness of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, to he hath made him to be sin for us. He who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. You see that? So not only our Lord is not just Calvary, but the life that he lived is very important. Because he lived a sinless life. 
in order for him to sin, God had to transfer our sins to Jesus Christ. He died for the world. Does it mean the world is going to go to heaven? No. Mm -mm. No. In order for reconciliation to take place, the sinner has to come to God and ask for forgiveness. In order for, that, for it to cover you, you have to go to God. And you got to tell God, God, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. I'm messed up. I believe that the death of Jesus on the cross is payment for my sin. By faith, I believe it. And I receive his pardon. On that note, you will receive forgiveness. Not just forgiveness, but there will be what we call reconciliation. We will now be reconciled to God. Are you with me? Oh, hallelujah. Because if you don't accept Jesus, if you don't accept his pardon, you are telling Jesus, Lord, I don't want your pardon. I want to pay for my own sin. Mm, I don't want your free gift. I want to take the punishment for myself. And can you handle it? Oh, glory to God. But thanks be to God. Amen. So the Holy Spirit attributes the righteousness of Christ to us so that now we can stand in God's presence. And even when we stand in his presence, we still got to go through Jesus Christ, the mediator. Amen. What an awesome God. And then he tells us in the latter clause of the fourth verse, I'm winding down now, that not only does he apply the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, not only does he attribute the righteousness of Christ to us, but he changes our nature. So now we don't walk after the flesh anymore, but we're now walking after the spirit. Are you with me? In the world, there are two kinds of people. God does not divide by culture or color or nation or Jew or Gentile. You are either a believer or an unbeliever. You're either saved or you're not saved. You're either walking after the spirit or you're walking after the flesh. He says if you walk after the flesh, you cannot please God. If you walk after the flesh, you cannot please God. For they that are after the flesh... Do mind the things of the flesh. He says, if you live out of the flesh, you shall, you shall what? Oh, God. So you either walk after the flesh or you walk after the spirit. And he says, if you are in Christ Jesus, you're going to walk after the spirit. Why? Because of what God promised to the church. In the book of Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 33, this is what God said. He said to the Jews, and I want you to understand that these prophets, when they wrote, they did not see the church age. They just saw the Jews, and then they saw the kingdom coming. They didn't understand that there's a church age tucked in between Christ's first coming and the second coming. They did not see that there's a, there's a, a chance given to Gentiles. That we could be the church of the living God. So, 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 so Lord, um, Jeremiah is saying, but this shall be the covenant I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, said the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts. Yeah. What is he saying? When he gave Moses the law, where was it written? On a tablet. But now he says, I'm going to write it in their heart. Hallelujah. What a merciful God. And then he says, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their God. And they shall be my people. Are you with me? So what he's doing now is the law that was written on the tablets, Jesus fulfilled it. So when we accept Christ, it's as if we live the law. So when we obey Christ, the righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us. This is why Jesus said, when you... He said, that he, to, he told them that the commandments has two parts. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. Yes? And then he said, love your neighbor as yourself. He said, if you, if you obey those two commandments, 
you're good. Because the whole Ten Commandments hang on those two. If you love your neighbor as yourself, you won't lie to your neighbor. You won't cheat your neighbor. You won't stab them in their back. You won't be a false witness on your neighbor. Oh, hallelujah. And your neighbor is not the person that lives next to you on the same street. But your neighbor is your fellow human being. Oh, glory to God, the one who you bump into on I-95. And when, he, when, he, when, when glory to God Almighty, you cut him off and he give you the finger and you want to do something to retaliate. Oh, because the love of God is in your heart, you just, you just hold your lane and you keep driving down the highway. And, and, and that's not just for the spirit, but that's for the flesh. Because sometimes you retaliate and the gun come into play. Men shall be lovers of themselves more than lovers of God. Lord, there's another scripture. Ezekiel 36 and 26. And this is in the Old Testament, you know. But it was fulfilled in Jesus Christ. Are you with me, church? You see why we say thank you, Jesus? Oh, hallelujah. Even if we wake up in the morning... And the mortgage is not paid. We're still going to thank you, Jesus. We wake up in the morning. Hallelujah with a headache. I'm still going to thank him. I wake up in the morning. Oh, hallelujah. And when, I, when it's time to get the box and not yet. I'm still going to say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Because of what he did at the cross. A new heart. Will I give you? Thank you, Jesus. A new heart. A new heart. Touch, look at the neighbor and say, a new heart. A new heart. That's like a heart transplant. And if you ever see somebody who needs a new heart, you would understand what it means to have a heart. There are some folks who need a new heart physical heart and they give them a device that goes in through the skin connected to a battery oh and I remember the guy <laughs> I had a guy and I said to him I said um, can you take this off he said if I ever take this off <laughs> that's it and that device serves as the heart and that guy will tell you that I need a heart like last week because the one that he has is mechanical we can't take anything for granted this is why every day we got to give God thanks you think you've got it bad somebody has it worse off than you he has a bag with him that has extra batteries. Because if those batteries ever die. So does he. But thank God. A new heart. And this one is not physical. But this is all spiritual. Because the one we were born with. Is messed up. Amen. The one we were born with. Have all kinds of stuff stored in there. Lie and steal and thank you, Sister Sandra. It's not the one that's here, but it's the one up here. This is why the Bible says in Romans 12, your, 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 your mind have to be transformed by the word. That's the spiritual heart. The spiritual heart is up here. It controls your every action. So the Lord says, I'm going to give you a new heart. Being is going to change your thinking. It's going to change every, your way of life. And so now he says, a new heart I'm going to give you, and a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh. Amen? So when he says, walk after the spirit and after the flesh, he's talking about action now. He's talking about the way you live your life. But he said, well, the way I'm saved, I can't be unsaved. But he's saying that now he's talking about the reality of your walk. When you walk out of the flesh, 
You don't need a dictionary to explain that to you. Because you know what the deeds of the flesh are. When he say you walk after the spirit, you know what the spirit is. You know what the fruit of the spirit is. And you know what the deeds of the flesh are. Lord, do I need to list them? Glory to God. He says that when you, are, when you are in Christ Jesus. Now, the interesting thing is, you don't walk after the spirit to be saved. You walk after the spirit because you're a saved individual. You are in Christ Jesus. They are called the fruits of the spirit because the Holy Spirit lives in you. It's not the spirit, it's not the fruit of Pastor Will. But the fruit of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, kindness, meekness, temperance, self-control. Paul said against these, there is no law. When you are in the Spirit, when you walk after the Spirit, you are filled with love, joy. I didn't say happiness, but joy. Happiness, you're happy when something happens. So if nothing not happens, you're not, you're, you're not rejoicing. But when you have the joy of the Lord, even when things are going bad, you are still rejoicing because you have the Holy Spirit in you. Oh God. Met a patient with cancer. Getting ready to die. But you would never know. Because of the smile that was on her face. She was ready to meet her maker. Because this robe of flesh will drop and rise. Oh, hallelujah. Flesh and blood cannot inherit eternal life. This flesh has to go back to the ground. Oh, but the soul of a man will never die. And this is the part of us that we give the most attention to because that part of us will be living throughout eternity. The arthritis is only for a while. The diabetes, you soon run if it's gone. Uh, the high blood pressure is only for a while. Hallelujah! The cancer, it has to run its course. It has to stop. Oh, the Bible said God did not appoint us unto wrath. But to obtain salvation through Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Oh God, I'm finished now. I'm finished. My note's not finished, but I'm finished. We were made. Jesus saved us for eternity. And so all the things that you worry about, they will only be for a while. The worry will have to stop. If it is God's will that you die, it, it, it can't follow you past the grave. It can't follow you past the grave because when you pass away, when you raise up, you raise up a new man. Oh, the, the, the former things will pass away. The pain will not go with you past the grave. Oh, but when you rise up, you rise up with a new life. And I love what Jesus said. Jesus said, I am the resurrection. He says, I am the resurrection. The resurrection is not an event. It's a person. It's in Jesus Christ. So if I'm in Jesus Christ, then the resurrection for sure is mine. And the same way he was raised from the dead. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I want to see him. To look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On those streets of glory. Oh, help me lift my voice. All tears are past. I'm home at last. Ever to rejoice. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter what this world puts on you. Hallelujah. It is just for a while. It's just for a while. Somebody say a few more days. To labor and wait. Toils up the road. Will then seem as nothing. As we sweep through the beautiful gate. He says, farther along, I know all about it. Farther along, oh, cheer up my brother. Cheer up my sister. 
live in the sunshine. Oh, we'll understand it better. By and by. I'm so glad that Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. But through him the world might be saved. It's no time for us to be on our self-righteous tools. Judging anybody, condemning people. Jesus didn't condemn anyone. He was, he, 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 it was, he was quite, the, quite, 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 quite different than that. In Luke 15. Lord, I said I was done. The Bible said... That when the self-righteous scribes and Pharisees came to him. And they began to criticize him that he ate with sinners. He said, listen to me boys. Let me, let, let, me, let, let me share three stories with you. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like. He talked about the lost coin. The lost sheep. And he talked about the lost son. The prodigal. The boy in the pig pen. The boy was eating, he was ready to eat, food, eat pig food. I needed help. Thank God for the father. But you know the story is not just about that boy. Because the bigger brother. Was at home. Sitting in the church. Feeling everything okay. But his heart was not right. He was in church. You can be in church. And your heart not right. When the prodigal boy came home. The Bible said he had a speech prepared to tell daddy, daddy, Lord, even the slaves are better, are, are better treated than, than what I'm eating right now. So just make me a hired. The father didn't even want to hear that when he saw the boy coming home. He didn't wait for the speech, but he ran to meet him. And the Bible says the boy is smelly, dirty, but he hugged him. Embraced him. Yes. Sister Sandra, he kissed him. Yes. Gave him the ring. Yes. You know what the ring is? The family ring. Yes. That was the family signature. Yes. If, oh glory to God, anything that the family buy, yes. you can use the ring to stamp it. Yes. So he didn't bring him back as a slave, yes. but he brought him back as a son. Yes. He was restored yes. to the fold. Yes. Oh, but the bigger brother. Look how long. Yeah. If it's prayer meeting, I'm there. Bible study, I'm in the front. Choir rehearsal, I'm on the choir. What young people endeavor, I'm in charge of it. If it's fasting, I'm there. And you've never one day decide to kill a calf. So we can enjoy. Oh, but this sinner. This old idler. This waste of money. Waste of time. This is a disgrace to the family. You him come back home. And you restore him. And you don't give me nothing. Oh glory to God. Oh but the Bible said. Oh but the father. If you put his arm around him. He, he, he had to love him. Because there was something missing. You can be in the church. And be overcome with self-righteousness. But we need the blood of Jesus. Just like the prodigal. We need a transformation by the blood of Jesus. Don't you sit on any high chair and point a finger. Because we all need God's grace. We all need God's mercy. Oh, but I thank God for the love of God. It's like an open umbrella. Open arms. Come unto me. All who have labored. And are heavy laden. Come. Let me give you rest. Paul says let him that think he standeth. Take heed. Lest he fall. Don't ever get to the point where you think Lord. I don't need to confess. I don't need prayer. I don't need to talk to God. The best of our righteousness. Is nothing. In the eyes of God. But I thank God for the blood this morning. I thank God that the blood is reaching. To every sinner. You may be a rum drinker. Mm, you may be snorting cocaine. The blood. Can reach you this morning. You may be an adulterer. 
an adulteress. The blood has not lost its power. You may be a thief. Come on, somebody. You may have tattoos from your head right down to your toes. The blood can reach you. You may be homosexual. There is power in the blood. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. They say in some states you can't talk about homosexuality. That is wrong. Oh, but I hear the word of God says righteousness exalted a nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. Whether we talk about it or not, sin burns the nostril of God. God will have to judge. Oh, but I thank God for the word. As it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Saints of God, it is here. It is here. It is here. And one of the weirdest thing is, it's in the church. But thank God for the blood. The blood has not lost its power. We don't condemn anybody, but we say, Jesus, the blood has power to transform. The blood can save you. We all needed, at some point, a transformation. As a matter of fact, we need a daily cleansing. We need a daily washing by the blood of Jesus Christ. But I hear the word of God says, if you cover your sins, you will not prosper. But if you confess and forsake, you will find mercy. Jesus Christ is coming back again. He's coming back again. He's coming back again. We thought COVID-19 is bad or we think it's bad. Oh, there are worse pestilences on the horizon. Oh, glory to God. No, they have a vaccine. But there are some that are coming that even the doctors won't be able to help themselves. Jesus said it's going to happen. Jesus said it will happen before he returns. Don't make fake news turn you into a fool. Turn your life over to Jesus Christ and let him direct your path. Ask him to fill you with the Holy Spirit. Because if you don't have the Holy Ghost, you will not be able to stand in the presence of God. Get in the Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus I read a pamphlet recently. A pastor said somebody wrote him and said in order for you to have the Holy Ghost, you have to repeat Jesus, Jesus, Jesus 20 times and you'll get the Holy Spirit. The Bible says you repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus and you shall be filled with the Holy Ghost. It's not about repeating things, repeating. You've got to have Jesus in your heart. The Bible speaking in tongues is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's not something you practice at home. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit. And when you can fake tongues, you can fake living right. Because the Holy Spirit, when he lives in you, you know you're a child of God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, God. I'm finished. Somebody confronted me the other day. And they said, but don't you know that Jesus spoke in tongues? I said, really weird. When he was on the cross... He said, he said, uh, Eli, Eli. <laughs> I said, really? <laughs> I said, the Bible tells us that. That is Aramaic. He spoke in another language. Another language. And then the men who knew the other language, they translated it for us. He said, Father. Oh, hallelujah. Why hast thou forsaken me? When the Bible, Lord, I got to sit down. When they talk about tongues, it was another language. Another language that could be understood. Oh, Paul said, when you go into church to speak in your heavenly language, make sure you have an interpreter. Because if there is no interpreting, you need to keep quiet. Oh, glory to God. But what Satan has done, he has brought confusion in the body of Christ. He has brought division in the church. And so now we're, we're using the same Bible, calling on the same Jesus, but our beliefs are different. And so now the world don't know where to go because everybody has a different doctrine. Oh, but there is one word. And Satan has been using this trick all through creation. 
But stay, stay steadfast in the word of God. God bless you. Study the word. He says, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Know this for yourself. Now let nobody trick you. Know it for yourself. And the Bible said when they spoke in tongues, they spoke as the Holy Ghost gave utterance. And when they spoke, people understood. Because the message had to be understood. God bless you. Stand to your feet and give God a praise. I'm finished now. I'm finished now. I'm finished now. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. And I thank God for his word this morning. And as we, we have come to a pivotal part of our service, where we celebrate in the Lord's Supper. Praise God. There's a young lady here who's also receiving the right hand of fellowship. Uh, Mrs. Vincent. Pull up your hand, sister. Praise God. She came to us from Jamaica. Um, she got married here over a year now, yes? yes? Praise God. Time flies. And um, his husband is his husband. Her husband. <laughs> We're praying for him because I believe that God is going to do a work in the family. When he works, he works in the family. Does anybody believe God for that? Amen. 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 And, and I know that at Emmanuel, we're about the saving of souls. Amen. I remember Bishop English always said when we pray, pray that this house be a soul-saving station. Yes. And I believe that that's what God is using us for. Nobody should come in here a sinner and leave a sinner. You got to leave a changed soul. When Jesus touches you, you will never be the same. God bless you. Praise God. Pastor Police is going to come as we partake. And we'll do the right hand of fellowship afterwards. God bless you. Praise God. I guess you may be seated. Pastor Police. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Come on and praise the Lord for the man of God. Praise God. He breaks it down. Praise God. And you have the Bible you can read for yourself as well. Amen? Thank God that he gives scriptures so we're not just getting his opinion. It's in the scripture and we can understand what he's saying. Come on and give the Lord another praise. <laughs> and we're going to get ready for the Lord's Supper and we're going to sing, break thou the bread of life. O Lord, to me, Hallelujah. as thou didst break the loaves beside the sea, beyond the sacred page I seek thee, Lord. My spirit pants for thee, O living word. Break thou the bread of life, dear Lord, to me. 